an Earnhardt wife stands up to Teresa. Let's talk about it. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Hope everybody out there is off to an amazing week. Now, I'm sure by now, everybody out there has heard the news about Teresa Earnhardt wanting to convert some of the property that Dale Earnhardt had accumulated over the years um, and turning into an industrial park. I'm going to give you an update today on uh, some of the things that are happening with this and one of the Earnhardt women who said, hell no, Teresa, we ain't doing this. Now, also going to talk about some of the other things that have happened in the past between Teresa and the Earnhardt guys that uh, led up to some of this animosity right here. But first off, I just want to start out with talking about this property right here because it's a beautiful place. I was just going by there the other day and by DEI, and it just every time I go out there, I just I love it. It just speaks of an amazing place that's kind of just in the middle of nowhere, and it needs to stay that way. Um, and Dale, obviously, he loved the outdoors. He loved everything about this. And uh, that was his home. That was his place to hunt, just to be out with nature. And uh, as you can tell by this little piece right here with Neil Bonnet, it meant a lot to him. Other than a race car, this is Dale's favorite place in the world. It's a 300-acre farm. And he built this fish pond, and he's having a new log home built. Now, outside of this, Dale also loved farming. And, uh, you know, it's a place for him to escape to get outside of the race car and just go on his land. As I said, hunt, do things, be with friends. Uh, but farming was a big aspect of that. And uh, he caught up with Steve Burns years ago. And uh, you can just see how much it meant to him. We're baling hay here and loading, getting things put away here, uh, getting hay took care of for Charlotte here. And, uh, you know, uh, working on the farm over getting the land took care of. Uh. Now this brings us to the point right here with Teresa. And she's been asking Mooresville to rezone 399 acres of this property. Um, as you can take a look right here, you can see the property that Dale had accumulated over the years. And she wants to turn this into commercial property for Mooresville Technology Park. Uh, now, part of the process of this is obviously going through committees, going through everything else to get the rezoning uh, changed and everything else. And um, on October 22nd, they met in front of the planning committee, and uh, this is where that Earnhardt woman stood up. And I think this is awesome right here. Pretty interesting, but um, Teresa wasn't there. She sent Dan Brewer, a uh, project engineer of this, to speak in her behalf, and he was met with 200 of the neighbors of the property there who were not uh, too keen on what was going on with this. And uh, it was a board member, Sean Hooper, who made the motion against this, to allow it to happen and through the evening 13 different people got up to speak on this uh, one actually announced to the crowd anybody that's against this please stand up and the entire room stood up so very much everybody against this but there was one Earnhardt who was there who uh, spoke her piece against this and that was Renee Earnhardt the wife of Carrie Earnhardt and Renee Earnhardt had to say we are a community in itself. We deserve to be protected and preserved. Stand up and support the preservation of rural communities. On behalf of myself and my husband, Carrie Dale Earnhardt, whose passion for the preservation of land and the conservation of wildlife was instilled by his late father, we are proud that he knows that we are continuing that legacy that he leaves behind. So Renee saying, we don't want this here. She lives there. She doesn't want to see this happen. So many other people don't want to see this property changed. A lot of people spoke up about this being their heritage passed down to their families um, and don't want to see the changes as well or the traffic. And the committee, they voted unanimously 8 to 0 to deny this right here. Uh, but the thing is, this is just a recommendation the planning committee does. It will go to the Mooresville Board of Commissioners to decide in the end. There's no date set on this right now. But as of right now, it's a win for uh, Mooresville and for the Earnhardts to keep that property as it was. Now, the thing about this was Renee has a lot of reason to have some animosity against Teresa with this right here. Uh, Carrie and Renee, you know, they have Carrie Earnhardt Incorporated. And in October, uh, October 12th of 2011, they announced the Earnhardt Collection with Shoemaker Homes. This was going to be an endeavor that they took on to design some houses. Everybody knows Carrie's an outdoorsman, loves to build things, stuff like this, too. So something that they were very involved with. Uh, but Teresa, 
did not like this. She said that with having the Earnhardt name, it might make people think that she endorses this and everything else. And she had a problem with using the surname of Earnhardt in the title right here. She said it was a trademark issue and everything else because she just owns the name Dale Earnhardt. It's hers. So she's had a stronghold on anything to do with Earnhardt name for a long time, which we'll get more into this here in a moment. Um, but in May of 2012, she filed a suit against them. Um, and it, it just took on for so long. And then finally, in February of 2016, it was ruled on. Uh, but she still had other issues with it, still tried to do other things with it. Uh, but there's there's enough there that you can obviously see why Renee was a little bit pissed about this. Um, and also, you got to look at Carrie with the first time of, of meeting Teresa. Uh, very well documented on the Dale Jr. town low where it's not funny, but Carrie showed up at Dale's house for the first time meeting Teresa and she said, oh, hey, and slammed the door in his face and walked away. So obviously there's some things right there that uh, people aren't getting Christmas cards, I bet anyways. But now let's move over to Dale Jr. with Teresa, uh, Teresa situation here, because this also goes back to Dale Jr. as well in many ways. Um, and we all know that the situation with Dale Jr., Father was father's past and would go into Hendrick and everything else. She didn't want him to get a part ownership of DEI or anything like that. Uh, but it also goes back to when Dale Jr. started Junior Motorsports. When him and Kelly started this right here, uh, it had to be called JR Motorsports because Dale Jr. did not own his own name. Obviously, you know who did. Um, so it had to be JR Motorsports as, you know, again, who owned it. Now, luckily enough, in 2006, uh, Junior was able to retain the rights to his own name, which seems so damn weird to me how that even plays into everything. Um, but then there was all the questions about the eight and everything. And obviously we know now that Dale Jr. has retained the eight back. Uh, but there was interesting things with this because outside of this, when Dale Jr. went to uh, retire, Budweiser wanted to do a tribute commercial to him. And in this, there was no eight. There was no DEI signatures to anything in this. And everybody thought again then that uh, this was obviously Teresa playing a part in this. But it's very interesting because Dale Jr. Uh, went on to say that he was he was uh, kind of happy in some ways with Teresa having the eight. And this is what Dale Jr. had to say. One of the things that I really appreciate about Teresa, as long as she has had the eight, I was very happy that it was in a safe place. I knew that it was always going to be fine. But if she doesn't want to pay for the trademark anymore, I'm like, we better get that because I want it safe. And when we thought about doing something with it, we were like, well, Kelly, I don't want to make merch. But if we raced a car, then I would feel comfortable with the merch. So right there, cool things happening because obviously Dale Jr. did get the ape. Budweiser's back on the car. Going to be out there doing some late model racing. I'm sure there's going to be some cool ass merch coming with this. Uh, but it's just very interesting, again, how all these little pieces played into everything and, and how so much legal part of this is happening. Um, but I'm going to say this much right here. I I love the Earnhardt guys. I'm, I've never met Teresa in my life. The rest of the Earnhardts, absolutely. I've worked with Junior in the past. I mean, there's just so many things that they're just the great people. And in my opinion, give them the damn property because this this was their dad's land. It's something they shared together. It's a passion they still share. They still hunt. They still do all these things. And it could be turned into such a great place that could be walking trails. It could be places for the outside community to come in and be part of something like this and remember and recognize Dale Earnhardt, the guy who created all this to begin with. So I would love to see something like that happen other than it turn into a busy industrial place because replacing all these beautiful trees and all the wildlife and everything that's out there and all the memories for everybody that's been a part of this out there with him, that would be a tragedy when this could just be such a great place. Keep the neighbors happy. Let's keep this little part of Mooresville what it's always been. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this episode. Give it a like. Definitely throw your comments down below because this is this is just a pretty cool story. And, and man, I hope in the end that um, that the good wins out in this situation. But anyways, once again, hope you're off to a great week. And as always, we'll see you at the checkered flag.